Hi, and welcome to Knitting with Queer Joe. This is the premiere episode of a new format that I'm taking a look at doing. It's basically to have a, a, a video that you can kind of watch along, listen to, and um, just pick up your knitting and knit along with Queer Joe. Um, today's episode, I really want to talk about um, do what I say, not what I do, is really the theme. Um, and it's about buying local yarns. Um, I met somebody rather extraordinary um, at one of the men's knitting retreats, Tommy Yates. Tommy uh, owns the Minnesota Woolen Mills in Minnesota. And um, he actually owns a flock of sheep out there as well. Yeah, I think he owns the only particular um, purebred version of that sheep. And <clears throat> he impressed upon me the importance of buying locally and buying from American sourced um, wool and or at least locally sourced wool uh, to where you're local. I've always had an interest in indie dyers so um, whenever I go to the sheep and wool festivals like Rhinebeck or uh, Maryland Sheep and Wool I'd oftentimes look for only the indie dyers who had something that I couldn't get elsewhere. Um, so um, I'd look at people like Groovy Hughes um, or uh, some of the other indie dyers that I really like very much and make sure that I bought their yarns. I'll include a link um, in the comments to a lot of the various um, indie dyers that I bought from in the past because I think they're really important to support. Um, but Tommy really impressed upon me the fact that the majority of people that buy fibers buy them from overseas um, or places where it has to travel an enormous distance to, to go. And today's episode is really about talking about something that I did that I didn't realize I was quite doing and I wish I hadn't after I had done it, after all was said and done. But I'm still happy with what I got. Um, the basic premise is uh, I was reading along on one of my uh, social media accounts about a circular sock knitting machine person who I really respect and she had um, found a locally sourced, uh, not a locally sourced, a, a, a company that sold rather inexpensive uh, sock weight yarns for her sock knitting machines. She does a lot of socks for sale. And um, and I found a, an amazing sock weight yarn that I really liked. It's called um, Universe. Um, and it had a couple of things that I really liked about it. One is, um, for my craft show, one of the few things that I don't hand knit, I actually knit on my circular sock knitting machine, I'm gonna do a little bit of a demo later for that, um, are these infinity scarves. I can basically crank out a tube on, uh, on the sock knitting machine, and it gives me an incredibly, after I drop stitches and do a few other things, um, and graft the ends together. So this one's not grafted obviously yet, um, but it creates this incredibly loose and drapey fabric once I drop every fourth stitch, a stitch on it. And I also turn it inside out to, to give it a kind of a softer, um, less uh, uniform sort of feel to it. But when it is grafted together, it's pretty much the perfect length for an infinity scarf and this isn't grafted, so it's kind of weird, but it, it actually creates a, a very nice fabric and it's soft and it's warm. This particular one is acrylic and it also has uh, glitter in it, um, that kind of glittery sort of um, yarn woven or spun into it. And one of the things that I like is selling those uh, infinity scarves with a little bit of glitter. They seem to sell better, especially if they're in nice bright colors and, and uh, nice vibrant colors. So I found these yarns and they were rather inexpensive. I could actually create um, one of these things very inexpensively and still sell it for a decent amount of money, which is what I look for when I'm trying to create my craft show type of things. So I went to this place. It's, uh, the name of the company is Hobby, H-O-B-B-I-I. Yeah, H-O-B-B-I-I, -I, two B's and two I's. Um, and one of the things I liked about it, the website is really quite nice. Um, it had an enormous amount of selection and nice colors and very inexpensive yarns, especially when they're on sale. So I looked for a lot of yarns to go on sale when I 
when I was purchasing it. And this particular yarn is called Universe um, from Hobby. It's a completely acrylic, actually I think it's got a little bit of nylon and poly or polyester and acrylic. Yeah, it's 2% polyester, but the rest is acrylic. Um, seemed like a perfect uh, option for those scarves. So I decided to buy a few of those, but I realized I couldn't really buy enough of it to get free shipping. So I ended up also getting one of their other yarns with, in two neon colors in worsted weight, which is called uh, Tivoli XL. Um, it's uh, another completely acrylic yarn, and uh, um, I got it in these beautiful, shocking neon shades of pink, which I can make pink pussy hats, which usually sell pretty well at the craft shows as well. And it kind of tells people what my politi political leanings are, which I like. Um, but it also, um, I also got a, a nice, um, uh, really bright neon yellow, which I think could make nice uh, hunting caps for people. Um, I'm not quite sure what else I'll do with that. Neon yellow goes particularly well with gray, and so I, I think I come up with some of those chevron scars that I've knit in the past with that as well. So, um, so I ended up ordering enough so I could get free shipping. And then I realized that it was going to take a while to get here, and I realized they were shipping it from Denmark. So the hobby, uh, hobby website and the hobby company is a Denmark-based company. And had I realized that, I probably wouldn't have ordered it from them. I, if I had wanted to get something acrylic, I probably would have gone directly to someplace like Webs or Nitpick, someplace locally. Um, but as it turns out, I ended up ordering it and getting it anyway. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to show you is um, kind of how I knit one of those, uh, those scars, um, those infinity scars. And do a brief demo on the circular sock knitting machine. I know a lot of people are fascinated by the circular sock knitting machine, as was I. Um, if you're not, you can skip right past this part to the last part of the video log today, which is the standard current knitting, and uh, you're more than welcome to do that. But basically, I have to take this and um, take it out of the center pull ball and put it onto a cone. Um, this is the actual cone that came with my antique circular sock knitting machine. And I have a cone winder for it specifically. And so I wind it on. You need to have as little tension um, coming off whatever you're pulling. So if it came out of a center pull ball and it came into some little yarn bars or snags on the inside, it would actually change the, the texture of the fabric, the, the gauge and the, the firmness of the, of the fabric that I was knitting on the sock knitting machine. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do a little bit of video, sorry, on showing you what it looks like from various angles of the circular sock knitting machine as well. In order to do the circular sock knitting machine, in addition to putting it on cones, Um, I also have to have a full, um, full complement of needles in the cylinder bed. The, the cylinder takes 80, this is actually a Gearhart 1925 antique circular sock knitting machine in case you care to know. Um, it's an 80 cylinder, 80 slot cylinder, so it has 80 cylinders. I don't know if you've ever seen any sock, any knitting machines, but they basically work on the premise that instead of holding your active knitting loops onto needles, knitting needles like you currently do as hand knitting, it holds each one of the stitches on one of these little latch hooks. And the latch hooks looks, um, do the action of actually knitting for you with the carriage pushing them in and out. On a knitting bed, they're, the latch hooks are horizontally placed so that your knitting is hanging down off the edge of kind of like the end of a, a, a flatbed knitting machine. On the circular one, they're actually vertical and they point upwards. So you need to have a full 80. We also need a really loose um, or an elongated stitch, um, knitted stitch when we're doing this. And so as you can see, I've got all, I've got blue waist yarn followed by red waist yarn, actually, if you, you can kind of see inside the, the cylinder of the tube. And I've already cast on the 
80 stitches associated with it. Now I need to loosen up the the tension of it or elongate the stitch in such a way that it gives me the loosest gauge fabric on the see I actually made it too loose and so I have to fix that these machines are very persnickety So as you can see, the looseness of the fabric gets a lot looser when I lengthen the stitch length on this. And so now all I have to do is break off my waste yarn and tie on and tie on my working yarn. I just do that with a simple knot. And then as you see, the knot actually, the working yarn starts actually coming in directly into my, I have to be careful on the first round because the knot can kind of sometimes get in the way. And then it's just a matter of cranking and cranking and cranking and cranking until I've used up the entire working yarn on a tube. So you can see that I've actually got the, the nice reddish orange glittery working yarn on top of the, the waste yarn. And what I'll end up having after I drop every fourth stitch on it is this simple tube of, of knitted fabric that I'll graft together in terms of an overall. I'll just go through a few different color changes for you. Amazingly quick to be able to do this, and since I can get this yarn particularly cheaply, it makes for an incredibly easily sellable, at a good price point, infinity scarf to be able to So the yarn actually broke, but you can see it's creating a very nice, beautiful fabric. And then once, I, and I'll fix that and, and rerun that through, but that happens often. And so I, I wasn't paying very much attention to my uh, cone of yarn that I had created for this. And so it kind of came off, but that's okay. Um, so the last thing in, uh, that I want to go through is current knitting. And so I'll take a look at some of my current knitting that I'm working on. Most of you who have re read the blog regularly know that I've been working on a pair of uh, Stephen West Sports, except I'm making longer legs. And so you can see where I am in terms of the second leg. And so I've gotten about this much done on the, the first of the two legs that I'm elongating. It's a great pattern by the way. It's very, um, it's a little bit challenging actually to read. I, uh, a lot of people have a little bit of difficulty reading through two of the specific sections when he uh, starts to create the, the bottom part of the, the leg on his shorts and also when he's setting up the increase setup row. Uh, it's a little bit more complex than some people. Um, it took me three or four times, honestly, to read through it, so I can totally understand that. The other thing I've been working on, as many of you know, and it's still growing at kind of a glacial pace, is the fox paw scarf that I've been knitting on. Now, I've been doing a little bit of blocking as I've gone on so I can take photos of this. Um, but as you can see, it's about four feet long, and it will eventually be about five feet long. 
Um, so I've got about 10 or 12 more inches to uh, do on this. Um, but it does move along at a very slow pace. In fact, just last night I had to rip out four rows of knitting for this. And the one last thing I'll tell you is Hobby also sent along with the order a little piece of candy. So I'm going to actually have myself a piece of candy while I pick up the knitting. Oh, look, it's a beautiful red heart. And I'm going to pick up my knitting again, and I suggest you do as well. And enjoy the, the closing music as we go out. And hopefully you join us for most of the other Knitting with Queer Joes. Please subscribe to my YouTube video. And also um, watch any of the additional ones that you find interesting that are in my various playlists on my channel. The more viewership I get, the more functionality I have with regard to publishing videos on YouTube. And one of the things that I'd really like to be able to do is um, include links directly in the video that you could um, link to. So for instance, I could have, instead of putting in comments a link to the Hobby website, I could have actually, or, or Groovy Hughes or some of the other indie dyers that I'm going to be putting down there, I could have included them directly in the video so you could have clicked on them directly in there. But we'll get to that point as soon as I've reached a certain level of viewership and number of hours viewed. Again, thanks for joining me. Please subscribe, leave a comment, like, do any of that other stuff, or share this on, on various social media, and I'll look forward to seeing you again at one point. Until then, get on. <laughs>